in the previous two lectures we gave you an overview of the modeling flow using hardware description languages we also had a detailed discussion on the register transfer level of abstraction which forms the heart of hdl based modeling of digital systems in this lecture we will be taking you through an introductory discussion on structural modeling styles in hardware description languages there are three different types of modeling styles that are employed while modeling digital subsystems using hdl they are structural modeling data flow modeling and behavioral modeling though behavioral modeling is the most important modeling style in hdl based design we also have to be aware of the other two modeling styles that is structural and data flow in this lecture we'll discuss a couple of examples which will illustrate how structural models of modules can be created we'll first review the half adder example which we had introduced in the first lecture then we'll create a structural model of a full adder using the half adder as a building block with some additional gates next we'll use the same full adder to create a ripple adder using structural modeling eventually we will wrap up the session with what is called a parameterizable ripple adder where the word size is made parameterizable the structural modeling style is similar to the traditional digital design flow using ttl ics as far as design effort is concerned so for realizing a digital block using this modeling style you should have a clear idea of the subsystems that will make up the model that we need to create and uh, the model that is created eventually is called the top level model so in this modeling style we instantiate the subsystems and uh, the interconnections between these subsystems are realized using internal signals we have already introduced this modeling style in the first lecture where a half adder was realized by instantiating and and xor gate primitives as far as basic gates are concerned these gate primitives are predefined in verilog so we don't need to create these primitives separately but the structural modeling can be extended in a hierarchical fashion that is we can create a basic system using the gate primitives and several instances of these systems can be used for realizing other systems for example we create a half adder using and and xor gates and we use multiple half adders to create a full adder and multiple full adders to create a ripple adder and so forth so we will take you through this flow in the subsequent subsequent slides in this example a half adder is uh, realized using uh, xor and and gate primitives this code was introduced in the first lecture itself we are just reproducing it here so here we are using primitives which are predefined in verilog so we are simply instantiating these primitives to create a structural code for the half adder so here you can see that from the hdl description it is difficult to 
infer any idea related to the behavior of the module and uh, as far as the design effort is concerned it is very high since we need to know all the gate level building blocks of the system and how they are interconnected here we have the test bench for the half adder which again was introduced in the first lecture so there are two initial blocks which assign vectors to the two inputs a and b the initial blocks as mentioned earlier get executed at the beginning of the simulation itself so basically what it means is that the signals which are assigned in the initial blocks get scheduled at the beginning of the simulation itself they the signal queues are formed at the beginning and the appropriate values for the signals are assigned at the time instances which are specified in the test bench but the formation of the queue signal queue is initiated at the beginning itself whereas the actual assignment of the logical values to the signals happens at the appropriate simulation time for instance the signal a in has the value 0 at the beginning of the simulation and after 10 time units it is changed to 1 and again after 30 time units the signal is changed to 0 a logical value of 0 so this is how the circuit is simulated using the test bench taking the structural modeling approach forward here we realize a full adder using the half adder which we have already created in fact we are using two instances of the half adder and an additional OR gate primitive to realize the full adder the coding style is pretty much the same as before the only difference being that we need to declare internal wires S underscore HA1 C underscore HA1 and C underscore HA2 for realizing the intermediate connections between the modules so this is an example of a bottom-up design approach where we create a system using simpler building blocks and the system so created is used for creating more complex systems so in this approach we make use of what is called design reuse design blocks which are available as predefined modules are integrated for realizing more complex systems in the full adder test bench we have introduced a new keyword that is uh, repeat so this is used for implementing a loop so using the repeat loop we assign test vectors starting from the vector 0 0 0 to the vector 1 1 1 respectively to the inputs a in b in and c in of the full adder the next step in the hierarchy logically will be a ripple adder so here a 4 bit ripple adder is uh, modeled from the full adder that we have already modeled and uh, I think the code is self explanatory there are four instances of the full adder FA0, FA1, FA2 and FA3 we introduce a new idea pertaining to the port mapping construct so far we have been using what is called the positional mapping where the signals are assigned according to their positions in the port mapping statement contrary to that here we use what is called explicit mapping of ports for instance in the first instantiation of the full adder FA0 
the port A in is explicitly mapped to the signal A in not. Similarly, the port B in is explicitly mapped to the signal B in not. Now the advantage of using explicit mapping is that we need not maintain the order of the mapping. If we are using implicit mapping as we have done till now, then the signals will get mapped in the same order as they have been declared in the original module. Whereas in explicit mapping, we have the liberty to even change the order in which the signals are mapped. In addition to the ports, you can see that we have declared an internal wire for the interconnections C0, C1 and C2 which are used for wiring the intermediate carry outputs of the ripple ladder. We shall use the idea of structural modeling to introduce another important uh, design tool that is employed by HDL designers. This is called parameterization. Parameterization provides designers with the flexibility of declaring generic parameters. That is whenever we are not sure of the value of a particular parameter such as delay or uh, word size at design time, HDLs like Verilog offer the designer the flexibility to declare the parameter as generic. The actual value of the parameter needs to be assigned only at the instantiation of the parameter in a structural model. Typical parameters that are uh, usually declared as generics are word lengths, delays or for that matter any other generic variable. Of course, in uh, delays are used only in simulatable code whereas in synthesizable codes we quite often declare word lengths as parameterizable constructs. For instance, whenever we are designing arithmetic circuits, we may not be sure of the word length it is supposed to process. For instance, if we are designing an adder, we may be required to design a 4-bit adder or an 8-bit adder. So it becomes quite cumbersome to have separate modules for the 4-bit adder and the 8-bit adder and so forth. So it really makes sense if we have a single design of an n-bit adder which can be configured to a 4-bit or an 8-bit design depending on the requirements of the design. So we'll take this idea of structural modeling to illustrate how the word size or the word length of a design can be parameterized. So this will be illustrated in the next slide. Subsystems such as uh, registers and uh, arithmetic units have an inherently modular structure. Therefore, these units are amenable to a parameterizable design methodology. In this example that is shown here, we have modeled a ripple adder with a parameterizable word size. For declaring a generic parameter, we use the keyword parameter. And here you can see that we have declared a parameter called word size whose default value is specified as 4. All the ports, the input and output ports are declared to be of a size which is equal to the parameter word size. Similarly, the wire C which is used for the intermediate carry stages in the ripple adder is also declared to be of a length which is equal to the word size parameter. Now as mentioned earlier, we use a special construct called the generate loop for repeatedly instantiating as many 
instances of uh, the full adder as required and the index of the generate loop is a variable which is declared as a special variable which is called genvar you can see that there is a single instance of the full adder which is outside the generate loop this is because the signals mapping onto the particular full adder are different from those inside the loop one more point that you can notice is that we have used a concurrent assignment statement for assigning the output carry c out this is required because the last output the last carry output of the last full adder stage has to be taken out has to be pulled out and connected to the output port c out so so to sum up you can see that by declaring the word length or word size as a generic parameter we are able to realize a ripple adder whose word length can be parameterized this is the test bench for the parameterizable ripple adder it is no different from the previous test benches that we have encountered the only difference here is that the word size is specified explicitly by a keyword called diff param the default word size for the parameterizable ripple adder is set as 4 so if we don't use the diff param uh, assignment the default size will be taken as 4 since here we want to instantiate an 8 bit ripple adder we explicitly set the word size parameter to a value of 8 it should be borne in mind that the generate loop is not a runtime loop the generate loop is unrolled when the design is made ready for simulation once the loop is unrolled as many instantiation statements as there are iterations of the loop will be generated so basically the generate loop is just a feature that is given for making the design process simpler and uh, the design more scalable for instance in the previous example we are using the diff param statement to set the word size of the ripple adder to 8 therefore what happens is when the simulation starts or just before the simulation the generate loops are unrolled and 8 uh, instances of full adder are created for realizing the 8 bit ripple adder that is instantiated in the test bench it follows from the previous discussion that uh, structural modeling is useful only in creating very simple bottom up uh, systems from individual building blocks also structural modeling is uh, required when we create a top level uh, model of a design for instance when a microprocessor is designed we design the individual subsystems such as the alu the controller the registers and so forth and for creating the top level processor we instantiate all these subsystems in a top level design and interconnect them as such uh, when the structural modeling approach is used for design it provides very limited savings in design effort 